Hi and welcome to Handmade by Dixie Tulip. I'm Mel and in today's video I'm going to share a pattern review which is for the lovely top that I'm wearing. So if you're interested in pattern reviews then do stay tuned. So a pattern review, I'm going to tell you which pattern I've made, I'm going to tell you how I've got on with the pattern and show you um, kind of what the instruction layout's like, what the picture guidances are like and things like that. Um, and then I'll tell you a little bit about the fabric that I used, um, any struggles that I had with construction and um, show off this lovely blouse. So the pattern is the iCatty Ida Mum blouse. So let me just bring it in and show you up close first of all. So this is the pattern. These are the different um, variances. You can see that um, this first version here is a dress version of what I've made. This is what I've made, which is the long sleeved top version. And then you've got short sleeve top, and the short sleeve dress so you can see on the front you've got the lovely collar and bib and then you've got some gathering which falls just underneath the bib there and then on the back you've got a gathered yoke and a keyhole fastening So let me show you my version in a little bit more detail and then I'll show you around the pattern. So I really, really love this. I think it's really pretty, a really classic style with a bit of an oldie feel to it. So what I really like is the collar. So you've got this um, collar detail with the ruffle. You've got the bib, uh, which is ruffled. And then you've got the gather, which falls just underneath. And then looking at the back, hopefully you can see um, you've got the yoke um, which is um, gathered and then the keyhole fastening the sleeves are long sleeve they were quite long on me so I have got a nice thick hem which I do like actually I think a, a nice thick hem just finishes off a sleeve and um, there's mine there but I have seen that some people have um, done a hack on the sleeve of this where they've added some elastic and made it like a puffy gathered sleeve um, and things like that. So there's definitely more that you could do um, to add different variations on the sleeve. So my fabric was, you may have seen, it was all the, maybe not because it was a while ago now, I had a vintage linen tablecloth, which was my Christmas dinner tablecloth which had definitely seen better days. So what I decided to do was dye it, this lovely powder blue color, um, and then I've cut it up and turned it into this blouse. So um, the reason I've done that is the linen had got loads of life left in it, but it just didn't look great as a tablecloth because it had discolored a little bit. Um, and it, I just knew that it would um, be a really nice fabric for a top. The dye didn't take brilliantly. Um, it is a bit streaky, which I'll show you in a second, and it's kind of got some graininess to it, but I actually really like it for this style linen and this style top, because it gives it that real age look about it. So let me just come in a bit closer and show you the linen. Okay, so hopefully you can see there. Um, so yeah, it's got a few kind of grainy specks and things on there. And it's a little bit streaky. But I actually really like it. And linen, I think you either love or you hate. I really love it. I embrace the creases. So I've been wearing this top all day. I've just come out of the car where I've been wearing a seat belt. So it's kind of scrumpled it up. So it is creased. Um, but I like linen for that reason. I think it looks a bit rugged and it looks um, worn. Um, so yeah, I don't let the creases put me off wearing it. It's really nice to wear as well, linen, really comfortable and, and really uh, breathable. So um, let me just show you a bit of a better view because I don't think you can see the full top. So I'll just do a bit of a spin and show you the top in full view. And then I'll show you around the pattern. So 
Okay, so that's my version. What I'm gonna do now is head over to the computer and I'm gonna show you around the pattern layout, what the instructions are like and um, what the pictures are like. And I'll kind of touch on any areas that I found a little bit tricky because there was a couple of areas that I really had to think about what I was doing. So we'll head off over there now. Okay, so I'm just going to show you around the pattern. Before I do, I'm just going to explain to you what you get when you purchase it. So you get the instruction um, book that we'll have a look at in a second. But then what, what you also get is um, a copy of the pattern with all sizes on it. And then you get also a copy of the pattern in all the individual sizes to save you from um, printing out a multi-size pattern if you don't want that. Of course, you've got the one with all the patterns, uh, all the sizes on there in case you need to grade. Um, and then you also get an AO pattern as well if you want to send it off to the print shop. So let's just go into the instructions. So here's the pattern. So as I showed you earlier, um, they are the um, different possible versions that you can make. Size wise, this ranges from French size 34 to 46. Um, and the fabric requirements that you need vary from 1.8 meters to 2.8 meters, depending on whether you're making a dress version or a top version and you need the fabric to be 1.4 meters then gives you the size guide it then gives you some information about cutting now this is one of the things that i found a little bit complicated with this pattern as you can see here you've got the different um, versions of the pattern and there seems to be kind of different symbols um, depending on which one you're making and I just found in some places it was just information overload and I, my brain struggled to take it in so as you can see here you've really got to fumble around in those instructions to know which what which bit is relevant to you based on the version of the pattern that you're making so you've just got to make sure you really read them carefully then gives you kind of some high level hints and tips and it then goes through the step by step instructions. So in the whole, um, they're detailed instructions. Some of them I did have to read a few times to fully understand what it was trying to say. And I don't know whether it's because it's kind of a French pattern that's um, been translated to English or, 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 or what. But I did find some of the steps a little bit difficult to um fully understand and had to read them a few times in the whole it's line drawings but then there are some more complicated areas where they include some photos so that's good um these are the more complicated areas so for example here if you were doing a lined um, bib which i didn't i just did it single layer but if you were doing a lined bib it shows you how to do that this was one of the difficult areas where I had to read it several times it was how you kind of enclose the seam um, which joins the the um, bottom of the bodies to the top of the skirt um, section because it's kind of a line drawing I, I found it really complicated to understand what I needed to do there but after I'd read it a few times I did work it out I wish I'd have videoed as I was doing it so that I could share it with you but um I was too busy trying to work it out and I forgot. So, yeah, it then goes through step by step. So, you, again, you've got to be careful to make sure you're following the right one for the version you're making. So, for example, here, we're just looking um, at this for the without collar versions. So lots of steps to follow. Now, I did only notice this um, just as I was recording this video and I wish I'd have seen it first, but apparently there's some videos over on the website uh, which show some of the more te technical um, areas in a vid video tutorial. So I'd definitely check that out before you start making it um, if you do give this pattern a go. So that's it, that's the pattern. 
Okay, so um, in summary, I really, really like this top. There's just what I just want to mention a couple of things that's been mentioned to me when I've shared this on Instagram. So one thing that I um, can feel is that the arm hole kind of falls quite low down. Now for me, I've still got plenty of movement. Um, I can lift my arms up, and the, you know the top doesn't shift. Um, too much but some people have said this top's ended up unwearable for them because when they've lifted up their arms the kind of whole thing shifts up so I'm not sure if that's to do with the armhole or if that's to do with the yoke or, or, or what um, I'm, I'm not too sure for me it's worked out okay I did fall between two sizes so I was a larger size on the bust than I was on the waist and rather than grading the pattern I did just for pure laziness sake really, um, make the whole thing in the larger size. So whether that is what's resulted in it being okay for me, um, I'm not sure, but certainly something to be mindful of if you're gonna make this top up. Um, but what I do wanna show you is the inside of the top because I think there's some really nice details and the construction methods. Um, it is a French pattern. Um, I wish it had got larger seam allowances. That's one thing I kind of find with French patterns. You've got the uh, one centimeter seam allowance, which I just find a little bit small. I'd rather work with a 1.5 centimeter. So maybe next time I'd extend that seam allowance out a little bit, um, but it was workable. I just find them easier to work with with larger seam allowance. That said, let me show you the inside of the top because there's some really pretty details. Okay, so this is the inside of the top. So what I really like construction wise, as you can see on the shoulders here. So it's a, in fact, let me, let me start and show you here. So you can see the bib is a separate pattern piece, which I've overlocked around the edge. And then you can see here is the lovely gathering. You've got the collar, excuse the makeup box, but you've got the collar there, um, which was kind of two pieces, a front piece and a back piece, and then you enclose the ruffle inside, which was quite tough with it only being a one centimetre seam allowance. It was quite difficult to get that um, stitched on. So I actually finished it on the inside by hand. You've got the shoulders, which are fully enclosed, which I think is a lovely seam. You've got the sleeves, which were slightly set in, um, slightly gathered, which I've overlocked. And then at the back, you've got the keyhole opening with the hook and eye, and then this seam here where you attach the yoke which is again fully enclosed so that's the inside construction so yeah i really really like this pattern i'm definitely going to be making some more i've got some beautiful merchant and mills linen and double gauze arriving and um, which I'll share with you once these do arrive um, so I was thinking um, maybe a double gauze would go really well in this fabric and I've got three meters of that coming so there may even be enough to make the dress version so I'll keep you posted on that and I'll share the fabric when it arrives and see what you think um, so yeah, the only thing to watch out for is, as I said, some other people have said they've had problems where the whole top lifts up when they lift their arms up. So um, do a bit of research and watch out for that if you decide to make this um, pattern. Um, but other than that, I really, really like it. It's really my style and I know this will get worn lots and lots. So that's today's pattern review. Do give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. If you don't already subscribe, then um, do hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And have a wonderful week. I'll see you soon. All my dreams Bye. Are All my dreams are humming.